cleaning the Ruger 1022 right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today, um, probably not the most interesting subject for some of you in the world. Some of you have probably done this particular task quite a few times. Um, I know I have, but if you're new to semi-automatic 22s, this might be a really helpful video. Um, same if you're new to the Ruger 1022 platform. Um, so this is my own custom built rifle. Um, put this one together oh, a number of years ago now. And this has been my go-to um, like pest control 22. Also shoot this in competition. Um, normally I have a one to eight um, Vortex Strike Eagle on top. I've taken that off because I do need to do some work with the rail. This actually has a um, tandem cross left side charging handle adapter built into the rail. Last time I shot this, she started running a little bit slow and then every once in a while it just wouldn't um, actually fire off the case. And I've got bricks and bricks and bricks of ammo through this um, and I haven't cleaned it in a very long time. So, the other thing that contributes to how dirty a, a 22 will get, um, and, we're, and we're talking semi-automatic 22s here mainly, because they are a blowback action, um, a lot of that um, carbon and stuff does come back into the receiver. This is also an integrally suppressed barrel too, so more gases, more dirt coming back as there's more pressure in the barrel. So we're going to pull this thing apart and I'm going to show you how I like to clean it. This is not necessarily the be all end all, this is just the way that works for me. Um, I will say one thing now, um, I use petroleum based um, lubricants in my firearm. Um, I'm not really using any synthetic stuff and this might become important a little bit later on. If you choose to use synthetic cleaners and, and oils and things like that in your firearm, um, you want to get all the petroleum based stuff out of the firearm before you go and, and lubricate it with synthetics. The big thing with a semi-automatic blowback like this, you want enough lubricant to keep it operating, but not so much that all the dirt, grit, carbon and whatnot actually sticks to that. So let's pull this guy apart. Um, now, if you're using a factory stock or one of the, the commonly available ones, this is an Archangel, um, you need a 532 hex head. Um, got my trusty fix-it sticks. There is another video on fix-it sticks if you are interested. I absolutely love these things. Um, back that screw out there. This one in this particular stock stays captivated. And then you simply... I place a thumb here with my hand around the barrel as close to the receiver as you can and sort of hinge it at the front. Now you must have the safety, and this is a little hard to show, I'll do it upside down, um, directly in the middle for it to clear the sides of the stock. And once you do, it just pivots out like that. Um, this is definitely easier without a scope on it. If you are doing this with the scope on, I strongly suggest that you put scope caps or something over the lenses just in case. Now, inside the actual stock itself, it is pretty clean and tidy. I'll just give that a real quick wipe out. Um, well used microfiber cloth. Right folks, so now we've just got our barreled action here. Um, all you need, some form of a small precision or gunsmithing hammer. Um, and then I like usually usually a relatively small punch, and then you want a slightly larger one as well. All you're gonna do, there is literally two pins, sorry, ignore my dog barking in the background, and they don't even require knocking out. They should come out, oh, sorry, and just let the bolt run forward as well. That'll take some of the pressure off. Push those pins out like that. Now your trigger group or lower receiver comes apart from the upper assembly. In the back of the receiver here, I have a rubber um, pin in here. Um, I think this actually might be derelict, I can't remember. Um, and factory with a Ruger action, they come with a steel pin here. That's one of the easiest, quickest upgrades to quieten down your 1022. 
you don't get that sort of metal clang when it hits the back of the receiver. Um, it's a little bit softer on the receiver too, bearing in mind these are only um, aluminium or aluminum. Um, so let's go ahead and pop that pin out. What I should be, really be using is a bench block. Um, these things make your life so much easier. I'm going to take our larger pin punch and just push it out and then we can grab it. Um, some of the different materials out there with these pins, some of them will swell too if they touch um, petroleum based lubricants. So it's important you get one that is hard wearing. I've seen them made out of derelin. Um, I've seen them made out of nylon. I've seen them made out of all sorts of things. This one actually, I believe, came with the trigger pack. So this is a kid drop-in trigger pack. Um, and we'll talk about cleaning that guy up in a second. So now we've done that, now we've got to get the bolt out. And this is a little bit tricky if you've never done this before. By removing that rear pin, we now allow the bolt to travel a little bit further rearward, which should mean that the bolt comes out nice and easily. So if you get really lucky, and we're going to try this, you basically retract that all the way back, and I'm going to try doing this upside down. Place your finger on the front of the bolt face and just give it a little wiggle up. Now this is actually going to probably work for me today. Once you've given that a wiggle up, you can release the charging handle. Now, if we turn this all upside down and give it a little tap, it all falls out. So, let's see if we can get this on the camera. As you can see, she's rather nasty in there. And this is what a blowback semi-automatic 22 will look like when you don't clean it. First thing I like to do is just give it a real quick wipe over and just get the worst of the mess off. Um, at this point in time too, um, tools like a little pick like this come in really handy, um, allowing you to get under things like the extractor. I hope that's coming out focusing on the camera. See all the dirt that piles in here. Okay. Now's a good point too to inspect your parts for wear. So some of the wears that you can get um, typically is the extractor here itself. Um, mine is definitely starting to wear the little claw it's probably not as sharp as it once was. I know that's working at the moment, so I'm not going to be particularly worried. If I was having um, failure to extract, as in it's not pulling the empty or even alive out of the chamber, I'd be looking at replacing that. Um, and certainly sometimes the little spring in here as well. But for today, that's all looking pretty good. The other wear point that can happen, and um, if you do a lot of dry fire with your 22, is you can wear the firing pin. Now these are all upgraded parts, so I'm pretty confident that they're okay. Now what I typically do with this bolt assembly, rather than pulling the entire thing apart, which I mean you can, you remove the pin here, that removes your firing pin and spring assembly, they were extracted out through the back, and then you can also remove the extractor. I choose not to do that, um, because most of the gunk can be removed without doing that. And what I've got here in a jar is kerosene. Um, so I just keep a bit of kerosene lying around for things like this. I just pour it over and be careful not to pull all the remnants of the last mess I cleaned up out of it. So I just use the kerosene over and over until it's starting to look real nasty. The thing I like about kerosene, yes it is petroleum based and this was my initial warning to you all, um, but it's, it's a solvent, it cleans and breaks down gunk and grease and grime, um, but it's also still oily and it still um, prevents rust. So I'm kind of cleaning and lubricating everything in here all at once. So I'm literally just going to park that off to the side and let that soak for a while. I can already see the carbon in that falling out of it, which is good. Now we're going to get in here, we're going to do the same thing again. Take the rag, just give it a cursory wipe. A lot of this stuff is not even going to be in there very, it's not going to be like stuck in there. It's really just a combination of carbon and the stuff left over from your last 
time you lubricated it essentially. Um, little Q-tips like this are really good. Oh. Just sort of work your way through and clean all this nastiness. If I can get that in the camera. Clean all this nastiness out from around the barrel. Now, I don't clean the barrel itself. I do clean my chamber though. You'll hear multiple different schools of thought on whether you should clean a 22 barrel or not. I'm not big on the cleaning of barrels really full stop. I only clean barrels when I start to have accuracy issues. So once you've got the worst of the gunk out, that's once again when these sort of like pick type things come in. Um, you can also use like a um, wooden or a bamboo toothpick as well. They work quite well. Now, if you are somebody who does like to clean the barrel, um, this is where some of your custom actions really come in. So, straight out of the box, this action actually had a hole in the rear. And now, if I get the angle right, you can see all the way down the barrel. So, you can actually pass a cleaning rod through the rear, rather than breaking the cardinal rule and cleaning a barrel from the front. Um, the other thing, too, is that if you know a good gunsmith, um, or have a friend with a lathe. If you have like a, a dummy barrel in here, you can obviously spin the whole receiver on the lathe and then bore the rear out. Um, the bub of the gunsmith answer is you pass a cleaning rod through the barrel, mark it on the inside, make a pattern, transfer that to the outside and do it that way too. I've done it both ways. The lathe is definitely the correct answer. This is your extractor groove in here. And these extractor grooves do tend to want to fill up full of gunk and they're a little bit hard to clean out, which is where one of these little picks comes in really handy. So that's basically my receiver and chamber for argument's sake, all nice and clean. If you have a Ruger factory trigger pack, um, they are a little hard to pull apart. If you have an aftermarket custom one like this, they're a little bit of a nightmare because there's a couple extra springs, a couple of little set screws in here for adjusting trigger pull on that. So I really don't like pulling these apart. I can do one of two things. I can put that in the kerosene as well, soak that through, and that's what I intend on doing today. Um, I'm gonna give it, once again, a little cursory wipe over as well. The old general purpose brushes here are fantastic as well. Really get it in that bolt face. A little bit of kerosene. Now, if you're worried about um, petroleum-based chemicals and you'd rather not use them, um, you can use just a general um, gun cleaning solvent to do this as well. Um, the other thing you can use is isopropyl alcohol. Um, now, before I forget, charging handle and, and guide rod spring assembly, also in the kerosene. So with the charging handle, just work it back and forward, make sure you get all the carbon out from where it contacts the actual guide rod. The other thing you want to do with these is just inspect them, make sure they're not bent. Um, I have seen a few over the years that tend to bend and buckle guide rod and charging handle clean. In a perfect world, you'd submerge the whole thing in kerosene. Um, I'm trying not to go that extreme. Just work things like the magazine catch back in and out. Make sure you're getting all that stuff out of there. These don't have to be perfectly spotless. You're not going through a military firearms inspection, if you've been through one of those before. Um, you don't have to be able to eat off it. It is a 22, it will get used. Right, now all the remaining bits and pieces that I can see down in there, I'm just going to grab some more um, earbuds, Q-tips, whatever you like to call them, and I'm just going to Get all the surfaces down in there that seem to have a bit of build up on them. Right, 
all feels nice and smooth in there. So with a, with a semi-automatic 22, you'd be surprised how little lubrication they actually require to run nicely. Um, picking the right form of lubrication makes a huge difference. All right, there we go, folks. We're going to get rid of the kerosene before we spill it everywhere, but if you take a look there, it's fairly nasty. Right, so it's time to reassemble now. So this is definitely easier once again once your optic is off. The first thing you're going to want to do is put the handle in. Now, what I do is I tend to put just a little bit of oil on either side of those rails like that. And you insert it in through the ejection port, it goes into that rear little notch in the back and sits down there at the bottom. Now what you want to do is take your bolt and have it really close by. Oop. Now you want to retract the charging handle as far back as possible and then drop your bolt down into place and keep some pressure on the bolt and just very, very gently bring your charging handle back. It'll drop in like that and want to pull the whole assembly forward. From there, um, so you don't lose that bolt back out, I suggest you put your um, buffer pin back in, whether you have a pin or whether you have a rubber alternative. These things can be a little tricky to get in and get in evenly. And sometimes you've got to just put them on the bench block and use the nylon side to make sure they actually do lock into place. That already feels a whole lot nicer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lube a couple of key areas. So we're going to go back with the guide rod. Hopefully I'm getting this on camera properly. The guide rod and just the two rails in the receiver like that. That is feeling good. Roll her over and put a little bit. You can see here there's a round slot where the extractor is. I just put a little bit in there like that. already feels buttery, smooth and new. Right, from there, um, normally you'd lay it on your flat side, you wouldn't have that extra charging handle, but I do, so we'll use the bench block. We're simply going to reinsert the lower trigger group rear pin in first, just be careful, these will tend to want to fall back out on you. So I've enlisted the help of the tripod again, because this operation can be a little bit tricky in, a, in an aftermarket stock, particularly if you have aftermarket receivers in that as well. Um, so you want to get that safety smack bang in the middle, so you want to put the rear in first, that engages in the notch here, pull the front down, and then your action screw comes up into the bottom there. If you've done your job correctly, it will just very nicely sit back into place, just like that. Ruger themselves from the factory recommend you torque that action screw to 20 inch pounds. I have found over the years with testing that this rifle actually works better with 25 inch pounds. It's beyond the factory torque spec. I'm not using a factory receiver. So if you do use a factory receiver, um, 20 technically is the maximum. If you're careful and you, you recognize the signs, take it up to 25 and see how it goes. Just push that until it's finger tight. Get it started till it's just finger tight and just come and give it up a rearward nudge, just like you would on a centerfire rifle, 
make sure it is seated against the recall lug, or in this case, the back of the um, stock. And just like that, you're back together. Now, like I said, recognize your um, capabilities of both your lubricants and your solvents. Make sure you're not creating an incompatibility. If you're in doubt, use the same brand solvent as you do oil. Kerosene's the down and dirty trick. I've used this for years on my 22s and it just seems to do a fantastic job without jamming up the entire system. So if you have any questions or you want any more advice, hit me up in the comments down below. If you're not already, please subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely and allows me to continue creating this content. Um, until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Catch you next time.